Okay, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to kind of back up because this is your most powerful biohack right now. Okay, you don't understand the power of acceptance. Not all of you don't, right? I'm, I'm not calling all of you out. I'm just saying, as I've been listening to you guys talk this week, I'm like, that's not acceptance, okay? So acceptance looks very different than you might have thought acceptance is. And basically what it looks like is when you come face to face with the bridge, when you come face to face with this, this cross, this, this fork in the road, 3D, 5D, you are meeting yourself on this bridge, okay? There is no one else on this bridge ever. There is no spouse, there is no mother, there is no father, there is no brother, there is no children, there is no God, there is nothing except you. You are the universe. So what you're actually going to face on the bridge is you, right? So if you're only facing you on the bridge, there is no accepting of mother and father and God and country and money and obligation. There's no acceptance of that because that doesn't exist. The only acceptance piece is that you created all of that. So I said, where have you not accepted you? Where are you angry with you? Because it's really easy for us to be angry at the mother who abused us. It's very easy for us to be angry at the narcissistic spouse. It's very easy to be angry for someone leaving us, rejecting us, judging us, hurting us. But at the end of each day, who put themselves in that situation? Okay? So if Luke were to be hurt under my watch by someone, He's going to be mad at me, not the person that hurt him, because I put him in that situation. You are at a beef with yourself because you put yourself in that situation. And some of you kept putting your situation over and over and over and over again. It's like, yes, please abuse my child. Yes, please keep hurting me. Yes, please keep ignoring me. Yes, yes, yes. You said yes to everything you have experienced always. You said yes to the parents you chose. You said yes to the body you chose. You said yes to your first seven years. You said yes to the siblings, the kids, the spouses, the narcissists, the abusers. You said yes to all of it. Now, when you say yes, part of your ascension process, and it talks about this in the Bible, very different, it is judgment day. It is redemption time. So what you do is you put yourself in these horrible situations to learn cause and effect, to learn the dynamics of creation, to learn to be hungry, to learn to be unloved, to learn to be unseen. So that is part of the game. But when you actually complete that side of the game, before you can go into the other side of the game, which is heaven on earth, you have to face all that you have done. You face every ounce of it. And it is this piece that the triangle has been birthed out of us because it is where I say, wow, that has been a shit show. That has been a very difficult experience. So I am aware enough now. I have learned enough now. I have studied enough now. I have forgiven enough now. I have showed up enough now to be able to look at this from a different perspective of victim to creator, okay? See, 3D, 4D is victim perpetrator, victim perpetrator. All you're doing is going back and forth, playing the game to basically download each side of the game. And once you download each side of the game, victim perpetrator, then you meet both of them in the mirror, okay? Because when I, wrote, when I wrote Warrior Training, I had no idea I was actually giving you guys coordinates for 5D. I had no idea. Warrior Training is the coordinates to 5D. Because the thing about Warrior Training, it shows you where you are in need, okay? Remember, need is third dimension. Want is fourth dimension. Is is fifth dimension, right? Me, myself, and I. 
My work will never change. It's this easy to understand where our evolutionary point is in this exact moment, okay? So wherever you're still in need to be seen, heard, loved, whatever, you are residing in the third dimension. Wherever you have moved past the needs and you're moving into the state of want, but maybe your heart is still longing, there's still suffering in the heart about what you want, you are on the bridge. And when you want for nothing except what you wanna do that day or what you wanna create that year, and all you actually want in the fifth dimension is to practice and play it out and demonstrate, then you're in the fifth dimension. When your entire life resides around you demonstrating your state of being, you have arrived. Doesn't mean that there isn't moments of desire here and there, but your desire feels very different. It's not attached to heartstrings. It's not attached to suffering. It's not attached to luck. It's not attached to needs at all. It is, it is what it is. You come, you go, you stay. You, you, I, don't, I, I, ch I choose, I play, I live. It is, okay? So when you're doing this acceptance work, you will not get off the bridge until you face yourself in the mirror. That's it. There's no making peace with mommy and daddy anymore. If you're still telling that story, you're in 3D. If you're looking in the mirror, you're in the fourth dimension. Now, this is the way it went down with Christina. You know, she said, I've been doing a lot of work this week and I realized that, that I wasted a lot of my life being with this narcissistic man and I chose it. And so I've forgiven him. I have accepted him. He said, no, your charge cannot blow if you don't forgive yourself for choosing him every day over yourself. You have to forgive yourself, accept yourself for doing that. I did that, okay? And it was interesting because that morning, right before I had this conversation with Christina, something really interesting happened in my little family dynamic. Um, I took Madison who now lives here. She's my 14 year old and she's been here. I've been really tough on her because you know, I'm tough on you guys. It's tough love. I see potential. I don't, I don't give sympathy. I don't honor victim energy. I don't honor, um, I don't look at problems. So she's not used to that style of parenting because I don't see her seizures. I see her potential in the seizure. I don't see her lack of mobility. I see her imagination that could be birthed from the lack of mobility. So her and I are, are not triggering each other at all. She doesn't trigger me at all. It's just her existence, but I trigger her because I am not giving her any sympathy. Okay. So we go to pick up Luke, which is our daily route, like our weekly routine from dad's. And as soon as he walks out the door, I can see that his vibration is low, right? Dad must have, you know, said something rude to him or something. And um, he gets in the car and he's just low. And, um, and so, you know, I start talking about, we've got guests coming to the house this weekend. We've got this big Halloween party, blah, 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 blah. Everybody needs to clean their room. And then I said, Luke, and you need to give up your room for one night because we've got guests. And he just threw a tantrum. I don't want to give up my room. It's my room. It's my space. And I look over at Maddie and I just can see her fuming at me. Like she's just like super angry. And I said, what's wrong? I'm not telling you right now. I'm not telling you right now. But anyways, long story short, I somehow unconsciously give in to Luke and say, well, we'll figure it out tonight instead of saying, Nope, you're gonna give up your room. I just kind of let him get away with it because he is that baby energy where I'm still in kind of, like I see Madison as this adult and I see him as a child and she sees herself as a child. So she sees this comparison that's happening. So anyways, we get home and she says, I, I said, Luke, get out. We're gonna stay in the car and have a conversation. And she looked at me and it was the best spiritual teaching that I've had in months, she said, you expect all of this from me. You expect me to do this, 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 this. You expect me to give up my room when you have retreats. You expect me to do this. You expect me to do that. And then Luke has one tantrum and you're, you're negotiating with him. 
she said, that isn't fair, right? And, you know, it depends on which perspective you look at, right? But, but what I, I took this opportunity right now, I took this opportunity in this moment to use the triangle. And I could feel that from her universe, she was really hurting from that situation. And I took the opportunity to fully accept her. And I looked at her and I said, oh my God, you're right. I am totally doing that. I totally just did that to you. I totally allowed, I totally chose favorites in this moment and you just witnessed it. I just let Luke get away with something I would never let you get away with because he's younger. And that is so not okay. And I apologize. I said, I fully accept that I just did that to you unconsciously. And I said, and another thing, my mom used to do that to me. She used to put the boys ahead of me and always made me do the Cinderella thing. And I said, and I'm doing that to you right now. I said, I am doing to you what my mother did to me my entire life. And I hated her. I said, I accept that I just did this to you and this is not okay. And what I realized is that I'm going to get emotional, but what I realized is that you see the subtlety of that, like how it's not a big deal, but it is depending on who's looking at it. Now let's take this scenario to your inner child. You're Maddie, you're Madison inside of you and everyone else is Luke, your kids, your job, and because you expect more from yourself, you put everybody else, you make negotiations with everyone else while in the moment, your inner child is watching you abuse her or him. So who we actually, what we actually need to accept is what we are doing to ourselves. I know bypassing wise spiritual realm, you had a soul contract, blah, 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 blah. But what about the part of you that is a child who doesn't understand why you chose the narcissist? What about the part of you who doesn't understand soul contracts? What about a part of you that's saying, it's not fair that you keep giving up your needs and wants, you keep making me clean my room and you let everyone else get away with murder right in front of me. And this is why you remain in the fourth dimension because you will not accept the choices that you've made to put you in the space that you are in right now. You have accepted to stay in the shitty job. You have accepted the shitty spouse. You have let your kids pull all kinds of shit over your face. You have let your mother and father dictate your reality. You are doing this. And the acceptance piece before you can get into divine intervention and surrender must be full responsibility of the choices that you have made either consciously, unconsciously, or subconsciously you have to own all of it because divine intervention will not emerge if you have not owned all of your creation, not just part of it. Because what we do as spiritualists is we bypass it. Well, you know, I needed my mom to deascend me. I needed my mom to abuse me. I needed, okay, but why did you give her 30 years of your life? Why did you keep having lunch to her when you could leave the house? Why did you keep taking care of her? Why did you keep putting her in front of you? Why do you keep staying with a man who doesn't honor you? That's your choice. Because when you are old enough to make the choice to make a choice, guess what? Now in a court of law, you are responsible for those actions. You stay, you give up, you your behavior does not match your intentions. When you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, imagine doing that to a kid every day. Yeah, I'm going to take you shopping. No problem. Okay. Nah, I can't. I'm busy. Yeah, I'm going to make you a great dinner. Awesome. We're going to be healthy today. Nah, we're going to McDonald's. You don't realize that in order for you to ascend, you have to throw yourself into hell and then apologize for putting yourself into hell before you can get to heaven. There is a very big missing step in the spiritual journey that is never discussed. And this is the biohack. The biohack is that you grow through what you go through. 
Nothing happens to you, it happens for you until you meet your maker in the mirror and your maker is you. It is, it is judgment day. And the judgment day is your triangle because all the higher perspective wants from you or all God wants from you is to take responsibility for all of its creation. The good, the bad, the ugly. Now, once you do that, it's a level of humility that raises you to the top of the frequency chart instantly. Because my level of humi humility in that car with Madison raised her vibration 100%. Watching me take full responsibility for my unconsciousness in that moment now in 3d that would have been a totally acceptable thing for me to do because he's a child and she's a teenager there's different rules in 3d there's separation and limits and judgments in the fifth dimension all there is is the child there's child there's imagination and there's choice so as i got made really strong eye contact with her, owned every ounce of it, and then shared with her that what I was doing to her was done to me and I didn't like it and I know how she feels in this moment and I am going to do my best to never do that again. And if she could hold me accountable, if she could give me a look or a word to let me know that I'm unconscious right now, I would greatly appreciate her. Her vibration skyrocketed. And all I was doing was looking in the mirror. I was literally having that conversation with myself. And it's the subtleties that are going to keep you guys in a low vibration. It's not the big stuff anymore. You've gotten past the big stuff. You've done the big stuff. You've arrived. But it's like staying on the freeway and not getting off, right? Because you're scared of parking. You're afraid of what's coming. So, if you do not fully accept every, every ounce of your reality up until this moment, as you have purposely chosen it, because you understand in the realms of creation, if it is happening to you, you chose it. I know you don't understand that from an ego perspective. I'm not choosing this, I'm not choosing this. You're looking at it, you're observing it, you're standing still in it, you continue to look at it, you continue to search it, you continue to talk about it, you continue to make it happen, you continue to repeat the spiral, you are choosing. And as a creative being in the fifth and sixth dimension, what is going to create your reality is your choices. And your choices are a lot of times unconscious just because you're looking at it. Other choices come from you being absent of it, unconscious choices. So think about some unconscious choices you're making right now that are keeping you going backwards, right? Does your behavior match your intentions? That's how you can find where you're being wishy-washy, right? Are you consistent with your inner child? Are you playing? Because guys, when I said the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 play, 20% action, I was not kidding. Because if I owned everything in my existence as I created that, I created that, I created that, and I, I apologize for my choices. I fully accept that I did this to me. I hurt me over and over and over again to help other people. I put myself last so that other people felt safe. I chose this partner because I was too afraid to leave. I was codependent because I didn't value my own abilities. I sponged off of people because I didn't know how to make money. I don't care what you have to apologize for or own or accept, but it can't be anybody else's doing because that's warrior training. That's, well, I forgive my mom. Divine intervention, come save me. The universe is gonna be like, girl, please. You accepted nothing because you are your mother. You are your father. There are fractal pieces of your consciousness designed to ruin your life to wake you up. Bottom line, there is no one outside of you. I had this conversation with Frank the other day at my house. There is no one else. So your judgment day is you facing off with all of your demons right in the mirror and saying, I am sorry I did this to you. I'm sorry I keep doing this to you. I love you and I am here for you now and I am going to hold myself accountable 
while I let divine intervention support that. Does this make sense? Okay, because we're really at the crossroads right now, you guys. You are at, you are at, each one of you are at the end of your vision quest called Judgment Day. You spent the last eight months doing nothing but re-examining your patterns, looking at your patterns, being in pandemic, being in quarantine, looking at yourself in the mirror, and this is not the time for you to forgive your mother. It is the time for you to create, to forgive the person who created their mother, who created the illness, who created the narcissist, who created the problem. You created that. Now, and at some point, this is going to click. And when this clicks and you can get really humble with your choices and your creation, and you start to send, then assign divine intervention in, you will see changes and manifestations that you have never witnessed before, all right? And whatever happens is divinely orchestrated to get us to accept. So whatever reality we live in is where we will be, okay? Now, you want your life to speed up? Go to the mirror. And I don't mean do mirror work. I mean deep deep acceptance work on everything that you've done, everything that's been done to you, everything that's happened, everything that has yet to happen, that could happen, face it all. And do it, I would start with the stuff that's highlighted in the moment, your survival issues, your needs, your heavy wants, your heartaches, start in that area of acceptance first because the charge will be big enough for you to face it, okay? Everybody got it? Okay, very much tough love, but these are the times that we're in. Um, do it for yourself because no one is going to do this for you. A matter of fact, every one of us, including planet Earth, is going to show up to show you where you are hurting you from now on. Everyone in the world is going to be playing your reflection. They're going to hurt you. They're going to abandon you. They're going to disrespect you. They're going to blame you. And you're going to be like, what the heck? Because now everybody is in your movie to show you where you're not looking in the mirror. And that is the only reason that they're there. And from the other side of the veil, they're going, oh my gosh, I hate doing this to you because I love you so much. But bleh. here you go. And you're like, you're a narcissist. And then the mirror goes, you're a narcissist. <laughs> Hey, who was that? It's like that uh, movie, The Grinch, right? <laughs> because really, all you're doing is getting a kickback from spirit, right? And so let the kickback be your teacher instead of your hindrance, all right? Okay, I got to run. I got back-to-back -back sessions. I love all of you. Good luck. Watch this as many times as you need to. All right, guys. See you soon. Love you.